And of course, Asur, the god, the bull god, is also found in the Bible as an angel, the Shedu. And Ashur is also the ancient Mesopotamian god of Sumer called Anshar, who rides the bull. And we find this same symbolism in the ancient Egyptian winged disc with horns from the sacred bull, thus the golden calf, or the sun god, Ra. So we have the connection of the winged disc with bullhorns with the Ka, which is also the double symbolism of the bullhorns that is the crown on top of the head. Thus we have the connection with the bull and Hermes and the Caduceus, K-A or C-A, thus the winged disc with the orb and the serpents going up the pole, the staff that was given to Hermes by Apollo, Next word on the list the is parallel. In he says it's a pair of cattle. L's, two bulls. Okay, let's look it up. Uh, we're back again on eddymonline.com. Let's look up the etymology for the word parallel. It uh, comes from the 1540s, you know, the most recent, whatever. From Middle French uh, parallele, from the Latin parallelis, which is from the Greek parallelos, because this is really a Greek word, okay? Which means parallel from para, eleois, beside one another, from para, beside, plus eleois, each other, from alos, other. So the word parallel is a Greek word, and it consists of two basic Greek words, two very simple words, para or para, however you want to say it, and alos, okay? And alos simply means another. So alos does not mean el, doesn't mean the bull god, doesn't mean the... So yes, the word parallel is a two-syllable word that comes from the para, which means beside or aside, and allel or lel, which means other. So you'll notice that the parallelus or the parallelos tells you to see the word alias. And when we look up the word alias, we find that it comes from the pi root of al or l, thus meaning beyond. And the etymology of alias tells us to see the word else. And once again, the etymology of else is from the pi root of al, which means beyond, which is a synonym for the word other. And when we look at the etymology of the word beyond, we find that the b equals to, or the by, plus yond, which is the great beyond, or the afterlife, the great distance beyond our realm. Like another dimension, thus the world that lays beyond our world, which is the parallel worlds. The great beyond of the unknown dimension, or the parallel world of the great universe, or the galaxy, which is why when you look up the etymology of beyond, the word galaxy appears. And the etymology of galaxy is related to the Milky Way, which of course the milk comes from the sacred cow or bull. And this is why the etymology of galaxy tells you to look up the word lactation. And of course, that comes from the lactic acid of the milk, which comes from the sacred cow. And by the way, the very word galaxy, or the Milky Way, comes from the Greek goddess Gaia. And Gaia, or Gaia, is the great Mother Earth goddess of nature, thus Mother Nature and the creator of all life. Which is the exact same story of the creator goddess, or the bull cow goddess, like Anu, or An, and, of course, Hathor, Isis, and Nut, to name a few. So you see, this is why when we explore the great beyond, or go to other galaxies and the universe, we are sending the probe or the satellite called Gaia or Gaia. And now you'll understand why Gaia online is related to the sacred cow. So perhaps now you'll understand parallel a little further. But let's take a look at the alos or the other. And when we look at the etymology of the word other, it means the second one of the two. 
and from the pi root of on tero, which gives us our on words, like the very word ancient or ancestor, which comes from anu, the ancient ancestral bull god, on and anu, as well as many other on words, like ana or inana, as well as the word ankh. And An gives us the great Semitic Ugaritic warrior goddess Anat or Anthat. And An gives us Anshar, the great sky god who rides atop of the bull. And An gives us our modern day words like animal or animalistic. And of course, An gives us the great bull god himself, the Angus bull just like the angel, which is the ong of El. So the alos of parallel means the on tero or the al tero, and the al is the el bull god, thus the tero or the Taurus bull. So the Cana Phoenician bull god el toru, the father god, was also known as el, the warrior god. Thus, the tarot is the warrior of terror, and thus the Taurus of Taromaki, and the Maki means the bullfighter to battle, war, or contest, which is why the Bible says the Lord is a warrior, the God of war. So now you'll understand a little bit more of why the God of the Bible is associated with the sacred bull. So you see, in order to understand what a parable means and why it represents a pair of bulls, or why a paradox is really nothing more than a pair of oxes, and to fully grasp and understand why an equinox is equal oxes, or to grasp why parallel is a pair of L's. You must first fully understand the concept of El, the supreme father god of the Ugarit, of the ancient Cana Phoenicians, and yes, the Hebrew Israelites. El, the twin pillars, or the double Bibles. And just as Jeff Binner of the ancient Paleo-Hebrew site said, the ancient Hebrews saw God, El, as a pair of bulls. Which is why the very essence of God, or a deity, means two, or the dios, the day and the night, the winter and the summer, as above, so below. And this is exactly why we have God the Father and Jesus the Son. So don't buy in to that crap about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because what they're actually talking about is the ancient eternal life of God, which is the father, the mother, and the child, eternal life. And this is the true essence of the Holy Trinity. I mean, think about it for a moment. If God, the father, is a male, that means that he has a male penis which means he has to use it on someone, which would be a female or a goddess. And thus, they have a child, which is the son of God. And if God has a son, that means God gets old, which is why he has a son. Out with the old and in with the new. So you see, this is why Saturn L, or Cronus, is the father of time. Thus, the reason that he eats his children, which means that he's eating time. Thus, Cronus is the old crone. So this is why Cronus, or Father Time, is the grim reaper, the old dead man, or the old man with the beard, who is always shown with the young child. So haven't you noticed that God, or Father Time, or Saturn L, is always shown with the long beard as the old man or the old crone? 
which is exactly why in ancient Ur, the bull god El from the Ugaritic text clearly states that El is the gray-bearded ancient one, full of wisdom. So eternal life is having children, or sex, basically. Our children are the very essence of us, which is why the Bible talks about God being the son or the same as. What they're really talking about is Jesus is the new son that came from God. He carries the essence of God because that's what our children do. They carry on the very essence of us. This is why they are spitting images of us. We are reborn again through them, our children, like father, like son or like mother, like daughter. And it's the same for the father and the daughter, or even the mother and the son. So anyway, the Bible clearly states that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Father God. Thus, Jesus the Son and God the Father, which is why the Bible talks about the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last. And this dualistic principle is carried on when the Bible talks about the sower and the reaper, which means the springtime of the new and the death of the old or the autumn, winter time, summer and winter, day and night, which is why we have heaven and hell or the bull from hell and the bull from heaven, which is Shaddai the bull and El Shaddai the bull of heaven. Satan versus Jesus. Thus, the very essence and the meaning and the etymology of Jesus is the dios, which means the two, which is the same etymology of the very essence of the word God, or the deity, which means two. So you see, this is why this very essence of this dualistic polarity is carried on in the very name of God, which is I am that I am, or Aya Esher Aya. And of course, the ancient Asher was always related to the ancient bull god. So anyway, this is why this polarity or dualistic principle is in the Hebrew alphabet and our current alphabet, which is the alpha beta, which is again the male and the female, the positive and the negative, or more simply, the sun and the moon, which is exactly why we have parents, which is a pair or para. So you see, this is why Hebrew religion is based upon the sun and the moon, which is time. This is when they worship their god during the moon phases and, of course, the sun cycles. So perhaps now you'll understand the true essence of the stories in the Bible, like King David or King Divide which is why David is a kingdom that is divided. Or why the wisdom of King Solomon is nothing more than the soul and the moon, or the sun and the moon. Or like the story of Jacob, Yaakov, and Esau, the Edomite, which is the red and the blue, the winter and summer battling one another, the two brothers that struggle, exactly like Cain and Abel. And of course we find this dualistic polarity in Adam and Eve, Adam the red and Eve the blue. And of course this same dualistic principle of polarities is carried on in the Ark of the Covenant, which is the two angles or the two angels of Gabriel and Michael, the sun and the moon.